Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at Node-RED SQL Database Log. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. The link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So Node-RED can easily log data to a database. SQL, SQL, or Structured Query Language, can be used to communicate to a SQL database. Databases separates analysis from the data, unlike spreadsheets like Excel. Now, the database is designed to hold more information than spreadsheets and allow multiple users to access the information. We will be creating a SQLite SQL database, and SQL Studio will be used to design the structure of the database, namely tables, and we'll be installing the Node-RED SQL Node palette, which will allow us to log information from our solo process temperature controller, click PLC, and dashboard variables. So let's get started. And up here on my screen, what you'll see is our previous, what we've done with our um, database, and we're reading it, um, the information, and displaying it in our graphic user interface, which is located right here. So the first thing we will do is download and install SQLite and SQLite homepage is right here. And SQLite is actually a, a, a command prompt information. So what you can do is basically it will open up like a DOS window and we can uh, type in SQL commands or SQL commands in order to create the database, create tables, etc. And what we do is we can download the latest release go down to windows here and uh, what we can do is download this sql tools here and that will give us a bundle in order for us to then utilize sqlite on our computer and there's a good tutorial right here on sqlite and how to get started using that command prompt um, commands and sql commands now, because we're just starting out and we're not sure exactly how the SQL works, we can actually use SQLite Studio. And SQLite Studio will allow us to use a graphical user interface in order to create our database or our structure in order for us to then learn about it. So we download this file and when we download this file, what ends up happening is it creates a, um, an extension for us. So let me just call that up. There's our SQL. Let me just go back to the root of that. And what you'll see here is there's my three files that were, were actually created when I just did my SQL light itself in my command prompt response. Then my studio, this is what gets downloaded. I unzip that, which is directly right here. And then when I go into SQL light studio, I will go down and actually execute this SQL light studio.exe. That will actually bring up SQL uh, Light Studio. And now we're running Studio. Now the first thing we do is actually we will create a database. In order to do that, you hit database and add database. And we have two different buttons over here to the file. You see the database type is actually SQL Light 3. Then we have a plus here which will allow us to create a new database or browse for an existing database so we can open and manipulate it. So what we'll do is do a we'll do a test uh, database. We hit this button here and we will just call it test and we'll call it test uh, uh, dot, uh, we'll say test2 dot db and we can call it any one of these extensions here and it will all be the same database. Now keep in mind that this is one file that we're actually creating for all of our database. And we, that file can go up to oh, well over 140 terabytes uh, of information. So we'll just hit save. And now that's where our file is gonna be stored. And there's my test name. And we're gonna uh, say keep permanent, keep it in configuration. And then we can test this connection and it tests okay. So we'll hit okay. And now here is our test. If we double click on that test, you'll see that we have tables and views. We hit tables and then right click, we can create a table. Now, now we're getting to the structure of the database itself. Or we can go up to structure 
and hit create table. Either way, it's going to do the same thing. And what we'll do is create a table. So we'll say table test is our name. And then when we double click on the actual uh, column information, we can then type a column name. Um, and our data type, we'll just say it's date time and we'll hit OK. We'll have another column, we'll say column two. And we'll call this uh, an integer or a double. We'll hit OK. So now we have two columns in our database. These can be anything that we want to actually log. So if we think about it, as we get those variables in from node red, we can now log this information into the database and this is what the structure is going to look like. So this is where you're going to actually spend a lot of time determining exactly what you want in your database and what to store. So once we've created that, we can hit the commit structure changes. And now this is actually the command that it's going to be used to actually create that. So everything even in SQL Studio or SQLite Studio will rely on using the command prompt and the SQL commands in order to generate or do um, the information or do the work required on the SQL database. Hit OK. And we have here that the table test was successful. Everything looks good. So now what we can do is we look at the data and you can see here's my two columns and as we populate that would populate. So that's my test but what we have is we actually have one already created so if we hit database and again we're going to add a database we will now add the one we already have created which is ACC automation. We'll open that one up and we'll test the connection which is okay and now here's our database. So when we look at double click on the ACC automation, you'll see our tables. We have one it's called the solo. And on the solo, let's close that one down. You'll see that we have our ID, which is an integer and it's a primary key. I like using primary keys in my table because if any, any data gets missing, that primary key now disappears and it keeps on going. So I know exactly if I'm losing information out of my database. And if I click on there, you can see my under my configuration, it auto increments one. So we're just going to cancel out that one. Then we have a date time. So this will be the date time in which we're, our variables are going to be stored in the database. Then we have our present value, which is set for double, which allows us to put in decimal places, which is what our present value is. And then we have our set value which is also a double. And then we have our switch, which is Boolean, which is either on or off. So that is our uh, structure for our table. If we actually look at data, we can actually look at the data that we have within here and you can actually sort the columns. There's the user ID and you can see the information automatically gets obtained in there. So that is what the structure will do. So now that we have our structure, the next thing we do is we actually will go back to our node red and we can look at um, inputting or downloading to our data or installing our SQLite node. So if we go over here, we can go to uh, manage palette and under manage palette, we can go to install. And if we type in SQLite, you will see that this node right here is the node that we want. You can see that we've already have it installed here, so which is good. And then, so we'll just hit close there. And if we didn't, we hit install. Then we can look over here. We can see that the node red light palettes it has two nodes and there they are right here. And then we'll just close that down. So we have that installed. And if we look down our function or our nodes here, you will see that that node is actually under the storage area, which is the SQLite function right here. So moving down our structure, or we, this is all we had, we had last time. And what we've done is we've actually had a, a line here saying write value to SQLite database. 
So what we're going to do is inject the information here. So let's look at the inject. And on the inject, what we do is we have a every five seconds, we're going to log information um, or variables. And right now we're going to log information using uh, the payload. And then we're going to take now, which is going to be the actual timestamp. And we're going to use year, month, day, hour, minute, and second. And then we're going to account for the time zone right here. So it's just going to create a, a variable that we can use for our timestamp or a date timestamp. Then what we do is we're going to create a function and that function will now um, have a message and that return message will be the topic and the topic will contain SQL commands that will allow us to insert into the solo table the date, the present value, set value, and switch values. And we get those values by the message payload, which is my injection, which is my date first. Then I get my present value, which is divided by 10, give us my decimal place, our set value, and then we get our flow switch. So that's how our function is set up so that all the variables are then uh, done so that we this will be executed into our database. So we'll cancel there. And then finally, we have our SQLite node. And on that node, what you'll see is that we basically point to our database location, which is uh, our SQLite slash accautomation.db. And then our SQL query comes from our message topic. So it's every five seconds. We're gonna then update our database and log that information. So currently right now, that is actually flowing or, or actually executing. So if we look at our SQL tutorial, there's also SQL tutorials to help you out. W3schools.com is an excellent place to get information and it's absolutely free. And this has a great tutorial on SQL and how to get information in and out of a database with practical examples that you can actually use. So going back to our node red here, so there's our information here that is go flowing. Now we go back to uh, take a look. Let's just take a look at our hardware. And our actual hardware, what we have is we've actually substituted our regular click to our click plus. So our ethernet connection is now through our Wi-Fi network located right here. We still have our analog pot right here that as we turn our um, pot, you can see that we have the values going up and down. There we go. So we'll turn that back down. So you can see that how that works. And then we have our thermocouple right here. And as we hit the thermocouple or make it, you can see that the temperature is rising. So we have that going on. And then what happens is if we call up our, again, our SQL Studio, right here, here's my information. We can actually refresh this. And you can see now that our, here's our new variables that we just came in. The other thing we can do is actually create, um, through this, we can create a SQL uh, editor. And on a SQL editor, what we can do is actually create a um, uh, information that we can put in here and actually view the information, such as our select. So we can start pulling the information from our, our database and see what that will look like. So a lot of different options that we can have for this uh, logging. And you can see how easy it is to implement using Node-RED. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. 
remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.